how an internal combustion engine works, the piston actually acts as your valve. So if you have your exhaust port here, keep applying heat until it starts melting. Put some on here. Alright, well there is the head and the spark plug. I think that looks pretty good. It's not centered, but I don't really care. So, um, yeah, that looks pretty good. I also crunched some numbers here, so um, taking into consideration all that area there around that um, spark plug and everything, I didn't um, take into account the area down inside the spark plug um, because I figured if it doesn't work very well, I can always fill that up with um, some JB Weld or something um, because that's not really required for a little tiny engine like this. Um, that's supposed to let the terminals on the spark plug, I believe, heat up to a certain temperature and burn off the carbon. So, I mean, I'm probably not going to get much carbon on there, so, I mean, with the amount that I'm going to run this. So there's some measurements, and the area comes out to be, um, let's see, so, oh boy. So the area of this hole, so there's point, you can see there's point eight um, millimeter clearance there, the top of the spark plug sticks out. So that's as close as the piston can actually get to the spark plug, to the end there. So... 88, 880 um, millimeter, square millimeters, uh, cubic millimeters, sorry, um, of space there. And so total clearance is equivalent to 2.8 millimeters if you scale it up to the uh, area of this. So in other words, I need um, 28 millimeter stroke. So the piston can go back and forth 28 millimeters in order to get um, a 10 to 1 compression ratio. So if that makes any sense, probably doesn't, but it does to me. So <laughs> um, <clears throat> so piston's going to be something like this. It's going to be a little bit longer than this, obviously. Or, I mean, sorry, the cylinder. But that's what it's going to look like. So I was trying to figure out how long of a cylinder I need. I believe the cylinder, so the cylinder, um, so it needs to be able to go back and forth and compress the gases 28 millimeters. So that's 28 millimeters there. And then um, it needs to be able to move back and forth. The actual piston needs to move back even further, about, I don't know, five or six millimeters further than 28 millimeters so that it can clear the exhaust port. So let's say this is the exhaust port right here. So let's say this is our exhaust port here. So the piston actually needs to come back to like here to clear that. Um, and then, so that's about, what did I measure that to be? I think that was like 32 millimeters. Yeah, about 32 millimeters it needs to come back to. Yeah, I calculated 32 millimeters it needs to come back there. So that means that my piston needs to be 32 millimeters tall so that when it's all the way down, the exhaust port doesn't expose the, um, the gases, the combustible gases back here in the compression area, or in the pre-compression area, to the exhaust gases. So I need to make sure that piston is that long in order so that it moves, yeah, so it covers the exhaust port at one point. So yeah, that should work. So now I need to start cutting this stuff out and just start slapping it together. I'm just calculating too much here. It's going to take me forever to finish this project if I don't get it to work. Alright, so now I'm going to make the piston. I'm going to use this um, metal epoxy putty. It dries in like five minutes, so you have to work with it really quick. But it um, works pretty good. So uh, I've made other pistons with it before, and it works really good. So um, this is it, and I'll show you that in a minute. But first, uh, this is going to be my mold, which is just a piece of three-quarter inch copper pipe, which is the same size as my um, cylinder. Um, so I'm just going to use some oil here. This is kind of thick oil, but that'll work fine just anything to keep it from sticking, basically. And the surface inside this tube is very, very smooth. I polished it up real good so that it doesn't stick at all. And, um, yeah, just put a good amount in there. Make sure it's pretty smooth. Here, give it something to wipe some of this off, because I put a little too much in there, I'm sure. We don't want too much oil in there, just enough to cover it. So you have bare metal, this stuff will stick to it really well, amazingly. Even though it's just a putty, you wouldn't think it would stick very well, but it does. It's really amazing stuff. Alright, so this is the epoxy putty here. 
Um, so you can see that the middle is one part and the other part is the outer part. So basically, in order to get it to cure, you just have to mix them together. So let's see how big of a piece I need here. So I need it to fit in there. It to be about that long. So uh, probably about... Yeah, I'll cut a piece off about. About yay long. It's pretty cool stuff though. Yeah, you can see there. So now you just have to mix this really fast because it really cures very quickly. It's amazing how quickly it cures. And it puts off a lot of heat too once it starts curing. It's like all of a sudden, like it's putty, and then all of a sudden it just starts getting really hot, and it's cured. Starting to get hot. That looks mighty fine. All right, well, there is the finished piston. Well, not really finished yet. I still have to drill it out and uh, shape it a little bit. But um, so you basically, sometimes it takes a little bit of force to pop it out, depending on how well you um, put oil in there. So there it is. Um, often you will get little like wrinkles and spots in here where there will be air bubbles and stuff that got stuck in there. So I went over it a second time then and just smeared a little bit of um, more putty in the cracks and things that were in there and then I put it on some sandpaper and just kinda rolled it on the sandpaper to get it nice and smooth so it's uh, so it fits real nicely in the uh, cylinder now let me start it at the top here, start the piston there, so there's the piston you can hear it going down there it is Boy, I just love running this thing. It's awesome just hearing it run that I made all this without a machine shop. Here, you can see. Look at that. Pretty cool, isn't it? So, uh, I just wish I could have gotten it running faster. So, I wish I could go back in time and, like, tell myself that I needed better, compre better compression and I needed a piston ring. So, uh, but... Or wait, I can! That's why I have my monopole bifilier magnetic resonating flux capacitor. Let's go back in time and help myself out. Hey dude, whoa! Where'd you come from? Oh, I'm you in a couple weeks after you get the engine working. I just thought I'd come back from the future and tell you how to do it a little better. That, uh... That JB Weld piston alone isn't going to cut it. You need some better sealing than that. It's not going to have enough compression. What? No, huh? It seals plenty good. I'm telling you, man. You really... You're not going to get enough compression. You need to have an O-ring on it, just like how you have your steam engine. Yeah, it's moving so fast, though. I mean, it's just going to... It doesn't matter if it has a little bit of a leak. Cause it's just not going to have enough time to leak out. Right? Fine, do it your way. I'm going back to the future to run this engine. It's awesome. I mean, it just runs so great. Wait, how'd you accomplish time travel? Oh, simple. I just used my monopole bifilar magnetic resonating flux capacitor. It works really good. Goodbye. Oh, I like this guy. A push rod here, or whatever this is called, just a rod that'll go through a gland like this, a, a brass tube. There are the holes all cut in the cylinder. Monopole bifilar magnetic resonating flux capacitor.